The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and, as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many many rich people put in large amounts. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she from her poverty has contributed all that she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. If we refer to Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, we see Jesus coming into his hometown of Nazareth. He gives his first teaching, or his first sermon, and he quotes this story of the widow of Zarephath, which we heard today. The story about her shows or reveals the the way God chose to reveal his love and his reach for all humanity through the example of his caring for the widow and the prophet Elijah. In seeing these events now in our lives, we realize in our embracing Christ's spirit his spirit of servanthood. And that servanthood is centered in respect for all people as sons and daughters of God. And there is a fulfillment in the compassion and the kindness we can extend to others. We can put the needs of others before our own needs using all wisdom. Jesus exhorts his listeners to look beyond the titles of respect and decorative dress and positions of power to consider the heart and soul of those who would lead others. He calls us to honor the dignity of the servant over the power of the powerful. He calls us to honor and to seek generous humility over cynical celebrity and to embrace the generosity of the widow rather than the empty gestures of the scribes. For us in this day, the widow's penny can take take many forms, a warm coat given away, an hour spent each week teaching religious education, a quilt made for a family in need, or one of the favorite things I think of is a dish of lasagna made for someone in need. That's pretty good. The widow's penny accomplishes many good things outside of our pocket, but we have to get it out of the pocket. It's not because of the size of the gift, but because of the love and the compassion with which it is given or used. 
The widow was reckless in her giving, wasn't she? This challenge, it, this idea challenges our concept of planned giving, of tax-deductible giving, and even convenient giving. Jesus' concept of charity is centered in unconditional love, and that makes such sacrificial giving a joy. 